First, uh, I want to thank all of you for participating in Educating Athletes COVID-19 webinar. This pandemic has affected all of us in, in different ways. And today, what we want to do is address impact that it has on college recruiting. Uh, as a nonprofit, Educating Athletes' mission is to educate athletes and parents on the various issues that affect high school athletics, whether it be recruiting, academics, concussions, and other topics related to amateur sports. But today, we're focused on recruiting. So I would like to get started by asking each coach on our panel to introduce yourselves and give us a sense of what has been the biggest impact on your recruiting process due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So we're gonna start with Chris Partridge from Ole Miss, uh, who just a couple of years was distinguished as the best recruiter in the country. All right, well, my name is Chris Partridge. Um, I currently am the co-defensive coordinator at Ole Miss. Prior to that, I was uh, at Michigan for five years. And prior to that, I was a high school coach in, uh, in Northern New Jersey at Paramus Catholic High School. Um, so I guess your question is, how, how does this impact us in, um, in college recruiting? Um, you know, I, I know that like the main thing is probably a little bit different for, for us, you know, being, and I know Joe is from a, from, a, you know, a new staff as well. Uh, bringing from a new staff, you try to, you know, gain relationships and, um, and, and, and really get your, you don't have a basis of who you're recruiting from years prior. So um, I think the, the, the fact that we weren't able to get on the road and, um, and really be able to watch and evaluate kids and, and all that has impacted us. And we haven't gotten many kids to be able to visit our campus that we are recruiting. So we're kind of on the hold there. Um, so you're not going to get many kids to commit to you if you haven't got them on campus. So right now we're just building our list. We're talking to as many people as we possibly can. We're trying Trying to get you know video workouts for as many kids to evaluate, um, but again, so it really has affected us in terms of uh, getting kids on campus and then being able to go on the road and, and get face to face with some of these guys. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, maybe Nunzio. Sure, I'm uh, Nunzio Campanelli from Rutgers. I'm uh, currently the tight ends coach. Uh, I'm in my third year uh, at Rutgers. As Henry mentioned prior to that, I was at Bergen Catholic as the head coach for eight years, and. Uh, you know, we're also a new staff, but we do have a lot of familiarity with the area that we're recruiting. And obviously, it's a little different for me. I'm in my third year there, but everyone else is pretty much in their first year. And you know, it really, it's a lot of echoing what, what Chris said. It, you know, getting guys on campus is really was very difficult. Thankfully, you know, being in New Jersey, there's a lot of uh, prospects nearby that were able to maybe come by in January or, or in March that one weekend. But, you know, no real evaluations. So it's really hard, you know, uh, you're doing the best you can with the video workouts, with tape from the year before and all those things. So, you know, I think it's a brave new world for everybody and people are trying to be open-minded and just find the best way to get information and, you know, use relationships of people that you trust. And, you know, I think you got to be able to, you know, dig a little deeper than normal to find out about players and what their potential will be. And, you know, I think we're all just trying to be as resourceful as possible. Excellent. Uh, Chris Bowden from Villanova. I know that's a little bit different. It's an FCS school, uh, but how, how different is, is it really? Uh, Chris Bowden, Villanova, OC and uh, quarterbacks coach. Um, I was uh, going to my second year at Villanova. Uh, I was a junior college head coach and OC for about 10 years. I coached in the Arena Football League for four years, played in it for five years, coached the quarterbacks at Fordham in between. So kind of been all over the place. So uh, it, yeah, it's been tough. The same thing that Coach Partridge, Coach mm -hmm. Elliott said is that we're trying to do as much video work of having kids, you know, film themselves doing their indie work, positional drills, all that, you know, post it, send it to us, whatever, just so we can see it. I mean, you got kids, you know, doing, you know, taking pictures in doorways and, and you know, something where we can see how big they are. And because you're evaluating a running back and you're like, you know, is he, is he 5'7, 165 or is he 5'10, whatever. So it's those are the kind of uh, I guess we have. It's the same thing. It's just trying to get as much information as possible. You know, talking to everyone on the phone and uh, like Coach Campanelli said, you know, really contact coaches you trust that are going to send you good kids. Excellent, uh, Joe Daly uh, from Boston College. Yeah, certainly, Joe Daly, wide receivers coach, Boston College. Uh, prior to BC, I was at uh, New Mexico as the offensive coordinator. Prior to that, Liberty University as the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. Before that, Bethune-Cookman. Before that, Kansas. Before that, University at Buffalo. So kind of well-traveled uh, in the profession. Um, I'd say the biggest impact that we've had is very similar to Chris and none is 
being part of a new staff, there's so many new things that are, you know, occurring. There's new relationships you're developing with your own staff. Uh, there's the whole, the whole understanding of what's going on with your own program. And then what exactly are you going to recruit to uh, in terms of your offense, defense, and special teams. And so you're trying to figure all these things out in the midst of just getting here. And just, you know, it's not the easiest. Uh, and then on top of all that, you actually got to find the kind of kids that fit the demographics of your institution. And so you're pouring through uh, a number of different, you know, prospective student athletes and trying to get a real feel for who they are athletically, academically, and then are they character compatible with your institution? So it's uh, it's a unique process, but I think we're all kind of going through some very similar, uh, you know, aspects of it. Yep. Yep. So Phil from North Carolina, appreciate your introducing yourself and. Sure. Well, Eric, thanks for the for the invite. Um, Phil Longo, coordinator at the University of North Carolina with with Mac Brown. I was previously at Ole Miss. Um, I, this will be my second season. I came in with uh, with Mac a year ago, December. Um, you know, I, I'm listening to all all four coaches here. I agree with everything that they said. It's it's a unique um, one time experience. We would hope that we don't go through this again, but it certainly hasn't happened before. Um, it presents some inherent disadvantages, I think. We, you have a situation where, uh, at least at North Carolina, we have an advantage to a point in that at, for the 21 class, we're really, we're done already, Henry. So we were pouring into 22s. Now, last year, a year ago, uh, we felt behind, you know, we might be behind Joe or, or Chris or anybody out there because we were a new staff. The things went well for us recruiting wise and you wind up getting ahead of the game like you'd like to be. And for whatever reason, we've had some, you know, a, a number of really good early decisions for the 21 class. And so we're getting ready to, to get out for May recruiting and see all these 22s and 23s. And now, you know, we're restricted from seeing them. And I think the biggest the biggest deficit is we don't we're not able to look a kid in the eye and talk to him. you know what I mean you know you know you won't go and buy a car from somebody over the internet you know what I mean you want to look him in the eye you want to talk to him you want to see if you trust him you want to see if you like the guy you want to see if he's honest and you and 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 you're willing to work with him and that that's no different in the recruiting world I mean you've got to get to know people and develop relationships um, and I and I heard a number of the coaches already talk about the character piece that's huge with Mac Brown also and so it's hard to really discern somebody's character when you're Zooming with them. And so until we can get guys back on campus, which will and most likely be not until we're playing in the fall, there's really not going to be an opportunity to get in front of anybody, you know, uh, from a face-to-face -face standpoint and, until then. And that's just the reality of the situation. The one good thing is we have time because of the signing date. And the other good thing is everybody on the screen for the most part is on an even playing field. It's not like someone is getting an advantage over somebody else. We all have the same disadvantage and we're dealing with the same vehicle. So I think when this thing starts back up again, there will be a max exodus from everybody's home and you're going to see kids all over campuses, even during the season. And we're going to do a lot more recruiting in season, I think, than any of us are used to. Uh, it, there is a disadvantage, but have you also seen an, a, an opportunity to either change your strategy so that you either expand your territory or, or do you condense it? Like, what's the strategy that you guys see now that you're basically recruiting from the Internet? You know, you're not able to see these guys. Has that made you guys think a little bit about going outside of your normal footprint or, or is it more? Let me focus on what I really have control over. Uh, Nunzio? Well, you know, that's a great question uh, because obviously with the internet and Twitter and all these things, you can find any kid everywhere, you know, so I guess it's really a matter of, you know, is there enough compatibility to develop an interest? Uh, and, you know, as everyone has kind of intimated, the, the personal relationships really matter. So can we get to know those young men well enough is really the question. Because, yeah, we, we absolutely can, you know, all of us can kind of access guys all over the country now because, you have more time probably to devote to watching tape of guys. Uh, at the same time, are they coming to your school without ever ha having seen it? Uh, are you willing to, you know, 
take a leap of faith on a kid where you don't really know him, you don't really know his coach. So uh, there are a lot of factors. It, it, I, it's not really so cut and dry. So, yeah, we could find out about a lot of players, but you also have to be smart about, you know, the relationships because character does matter. And, you know, as, you know, Joe mentioned, you know, th- is the guy a fit for your program? Is he, a, you know, is he, uh, does he fit what we're looking for in our profile? And so you got to really dig hard to find those relationships and see if we can make that connection if we're going with someone that's kind of outside of our footprint. You know, Coach Chiano is very big on the state of Rutgers and that, you know, kind of the, the area where you're within, uh, you know, say three hours from the Rutgers campus. And that's really important to us. And then the relationships that he's had in Florida. So to go outside of that footprint, you know, it's going to take a lot of work for us. How do you make up for the fact that they're not able to go to a camp or able to go to visit your school? Do you have virtual tours? Do you do Zoom conferences? Like what, what are the things that you guys are invoking so that you can talk to kids? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, this is a whole new world for us, right? So we're trying to figure it out as well, you know, but um, so we are doing, you know, the thing that I've kind of found here with the guys that you do have relationships with, you know, the coaches and the players and, and, and things like that, you're really getting to know them. You know, because, you know, we're, we're doing calls with, with guys that we feel, you know, really good about that, that, that there is that connection, you know, maybe once a week and, and getting on with different people of our staff. So I think that is an advantage, right, where, where we're able to now. Now, we're not face to face with them, but we're really talking to these kids more so than, than maybe you would, you would be able to um, because all we do is have time right now. Um, but so virtual tours have been big, you know, just trying to get, you know, different videos of the campus and, and show different things and get different people that will touch them, you know, on. So normally a kid comes to campus and you meet everybody, right? The strength coach and, and the academic people and all that. Well, you know, trying to get them in front of like to know who those people are through the internet, through Zoom, I think has been a big thing. Um, you know, kids, you know, have been really proactive in, in getting workouts to us. You know, we're saying, hey, we can't, you know, we can't watch you in the spring, obviously, like we normally would. You know, so if you're going out to work out with somebody, you know, videotape it and send it. That's been really good and really helpful for some guys, you know, that um, that maybe, you know, we're, we were teetering on and now we're watching them run around and do these workouts. It's, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been an advantage. So, you know, so those are some of the things we've been doing. Has this moved recruiting much faster as well as commitments? I mean, now do you see a, a change in the process uh, because I guess kids may not be able to, you know, once they get these offers, they have to make a decision faster or are they taking their time? The same thing with you guys. Is your, I guess, your ratio of how many offers you give to how many offers you need, is that changed as well? Well, the answer to the second one uh, first for a brand new staff, so I don't know how many offers that we've put out in years past to be able to examine if it's more or less than we have in years past. So uh, I can't give you a solid answer on that. But in terms of the process itself, I think we've been able to vet uh, young men uh, at a faster rate, so to speak, to find if they have the measurables that we're looking for athletically, uh, academically. And then obviously the talent, you know, uh, portion of it in terms of position specific. And then the character component, what uh, I think Phil and Chris alluded to was being able to spend more time with these guys on uh, Zoom and, and, you know, FaceTime to get a better feel for who they are has allowed us to do that at a larger level or scale to get a better baseline of, you know, do they fit, you know, the talent, academic and character requirements. I think, you know, uh, the hardest part about all this is, is it, you know, is it all authentic? Is it all genuine? Because some of the measures that you're looking for don't uh, come from the same sources that have the same uh, standards in terms of height, weight, uh, arm length, hand size, uh, vert broad. So you're going off of some numbers that may not be, uh, you know, as accurate as you'd like them to be and people are are, you know committing at a faster rate Uh, i just think because of the uncertainty you know going forward and if you have something in your hand now you would understand why a young man or woman would uh, decide to take a you know an athletic scholarship now knowing that the future is uncertain in this environment how do you present your value proposition to a player Uh, since they can't come and see the facility they can't come and meet the coaches and so on uh, you, you must use a different 
you know, different approach. But, so I'm wondering, how do you really say, hey, look, we have a competitive advantage over any other school because blah, blah, blah. For us, we sell the academics hard, you know, just, just for where we're at. Um, you know, we want kids that want the academics that can handle it. Um, so, you know, the Zoom meetings as well, kind of as, uh, as Coach Partridge alluded to, is that, you know, we'll put them on with our academic person. Then, you know, the next week, put them on with the strength conditioning per- person, uh, do the virtual tour, whatever we can do to show the recruits, um, you know, what they need. So, I mean, it's just, you have to sell. I mean, you know, the kids are selling us their film, you know, we're on the school and then trying to do, you know, the best research we can possible to, you know, make the right decision. And it's, you know, we're, we're over offered and we, we normally don't offer very many kids early and we, we really take our time and, you know, we're, you know, we've over offered a lot more than Villanova has so not much, but it's still, you know, we don't know. I mean, we have two commitments and that's surprising for us at our level to get them that early. So, um, yeah, it's, I mean, it, whatever you can do and <laughs> to show the kids the school and, um, you know, like I said, the virtual tour, I think is great. I mean, that's like probably the best thing for the kids to see campus. Our campus is, is somewhat open, I guess. So we've told recruits, Hey, you can come drive through it and see this and see that don't go in the buildings, but, um, you know, just trying to play by the rules the best we can. Gotcha. Well, Chris, Chris Partridge, how do you answer the same question? How do you present your value proposition? Yeah. I mean, I think at this point, it it becomes about you, right? You know, you got to make sure that the relationship is strong and, 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 you know, you gotta, you gotta be able to sell the staff and who, who that's going to be coaching them. Um, especially with a new staff, I think that's important too, because, you know, there's like a commitment to this, like this for, this is our first class, right? So that's a big thing for us to sell. This is our first class. It's a brand new staff. Here are our coaches here where they, here's where they came from, right? Here's who they coached in the past, you know, and, and that's, that's the main thing for us right now. Um, obviously, you know, you know, showing them the campus and just letting them know, hey, this is a beautiful campus. When you do come and see it, you're going to be impressed. Here's some previews of it, right? And then, and then, obviously, selling what you normally would sell, you know, when they're on campus. Like, you know, you're, you know, for us, it's like, hey, we're going to sell the conference we're in. We're going to sell um, the success the school has had in the past. You know, um, things like that. The players that have came come from different areas. You know, you might be recruiting a kid from Atlanta and have a kid that was really successful at Ole Miss from Atlanta or, you know, something like that. So, you know, those are the things, but those are normal. That, that would be a normal sell. I think to answer it right now, it, it's the people. It, it's who's going to be coaching them and then the relationships with the people while you're, while you're on, um, on this virtual deal. Excellent. Uh, Phil, your, your, your thoughts on that? You know, I, I think uh, a lot of the points that coaches make are, are, are very valid. I, I don't know how much recruiting has actually changed other than the contact piece. I mean, we're all, we're using the same material. We're, we're, we're selling the, you know, the positives and the bright spots of our university. We're probably, uh, if, if we're doing things the right way, we're not negatively recruiting and we're trying to develop relationships. And, you know, the, the biggest issue is not meeting grandma and grand, grandpa that come to campus and walk around. It's not meeting and being able to separate mom and dad and sit down and just get to know them one-on-one. You can't, it's hard to do that when you have the whole family on Zoom and, and uh, you know, to develop individual relationships, it's, it's tough. You know, and, and you don't, things are not nearly as personal. And I, and I think uh, not just in recruiting, but probably the way we work out of the office. I know Coach Brown has already, uh, you know, refer to maybe evaluating how we work in the office with regards to recruiting calls and doing different things, because I think he likes a lot of the things that are going on with what we're doing on our staff. And we may continue to do them, even though this is even after this is over. And so I, I think obviously we all know it's going to affect a lot of things, even beyond recruiting. But I, I still think it's a very similar answer to your last question. I think the personal piece the relationship that we're trying to develop with these people, because ultimately recruits and their families are going to make decisions about coming to your place. You would hope because it's the best place for them, but we all know it's also has a lot to do with the relationship that they have to do with the recruiting coaches and the positional coaches and sometimes the coordinators and the head coach. So those things are lost when you're doing things, you know, over zoom the way we're doing right now. I'll leave Joe to answer that question. How do you, demonstrate what you have that students should really consider at Boston College? 
Yeah, certainly. I think uh, you start off with the academic component, right? You, you come to Boston College because it's an elite degree that has a national uh, recognition. And when you walk away from, your, you know, Boston College, you know, that's a stamp that is recognizable across this country and in other continents as well. And then you talk about specifically coming here to play uh, football. You're in the ACC and you're playing, you know, the who on the East Coast, top to bottom. And you're going to have national exposure. You're going to be playing against guys that are going to be playing on Sundays. Uh, and then you're going to be playing uh, against guys that are going to be, you know, uh, doctors, lawyers, and businessmen uh, all over this country uh, and possibly this world. And then the actual coaching that you're going to get here with this staff, you have a, a group of men that have coached at the highest level that have years and years and years of experience coaching in the National Football League. And we have a plan to develop you from a whole person perspective, you know, athletically, socially, spiritually, and obviously academically. And so you talk about the whole package, you know, Boston College, you know, offers that. Nuns? Uh... Well, you know, I think, Henry, what you were saying originally, I guess, is, you know, just how do we sell the values of our program and what we're about? You know, and I, I think the big thing is, you know, Coach Yano has a very clear uh, culture that he – that he believes in and the whole program is really the foundation of our program. So I think everybody in our organization completely understands what it is, you know, family trust chop and everybody that we're recruiting uh, understands how that's going to impact them. And then on top of it, you know, a lot of guys have hit on the relationships. There is lots of time to actually invest in getting to know people and showing people who we are uh, show getting to really know who they are and how that culture might impact their life and who's the right fit for it. You know, if that's attractive to somebody, then, you know, they're probably somebody that we want and, and we want to really get to know. And we've really got some wonderful people in our program outside of our coaching staff. We have a lot of people that have uh, ties to one another and ties to the school. So uh, this has been an opportunity to get all those people involved in, in the in the recruiting process. And it might be, you know, maybe harder to do that in, in the past, or maybe people wouldn't have thought to do it. And so uh, there's probably things that have come from this that will help us hopefully for years to come. Thank you guys. Uh, let me ask one more question in, in this same frame of mind. What are the top three things that you look for in a student, a student athlete? And I'll ask uh, Chris Partridge. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, I think Nunes kind of just hit it on the head, right? You know, uh, first off, you know, you look for an individual, but you also look for it as a whole in, in your class, right? So it's really important that you bring in like-minded guys that are going to fit your, your vision and your program. Right. And, and you can't, you know, the more you reach out of that vision um, and the more you start recruiting guys that, that you don't feel like have that, um, I think you, you run into problems. So um, I, I think the number one thing, you know, is, is just is character. Right. Is, is is work ethic is is guys that how are they on their team? You know, obviously, if we're recruiting them, they're really, really good football players. Right. They're they're guys that, that have intangibles that can do all the things that, you know, that that we wouldn't be looking at them if they didn't perform on the field athletically. Okay. So then it becomes, all right, well, we know this guy can perform, but how, how is his character? How is he as a teammate? Does he have empathy to his teammates? Right. Does he care about his teammates? Does he have any innate leadership qualities? Like, has he been a captain? If not, why isn't he a captain? You know, what, what is the issue there? So I think, um, you know, that, that is really the, the number one thing is, is how does he mesh? You know, the best guys that, that I've been around uh, the, the best players, you know, they have a certain empathy for their teammates. They understand that football is a team game right the the, the individualism it, it doesn't allow them to reach their ceiling right so so that's what that's a huge thing that I look at you know how do they treat the people around them teammates and coaches and do they understand that football is a team game and then you know another thing that, that is important to, to the way I view is do they handle themselves in the classroom and in the school right are they going to be a guy who you know misses school a lot is, is tardy a lot. You know, that's one of the first things I'd look at when I get a transcript. I'm sure these guys do the same thing is how many guys, how many times has this guy been late to school? 
right? Because then what happens is when he gets to college, he's going to be the same guy that the academic people are calling you. He's not in class. He's late to class again. And he detracts from the rest of the room. It detracts from the rest of the team. So, um, so I think guys that handle their business, right? And I'm not talking, they don't have to be a 3A GPA, right? But they have to at least handle their business. They have to show up. They have to work at it. They have to care. Right. I think I think that's that's an important quality as well. The second half of these uh, questions, I'm, I'm going to really take it from the perspective of the student athlete, what they should incorporate into their own recruiting strategy. But before I want to take a break and, and encourage listeners to subscribe to our YouTube channels and social media accounts uh, to get more information on recruiting and, and, and all the other aspects of, of what we offer. So let, let's continue on the students. And, and let me ask you, what is the best way in this environment for high school athletes to get exposure at, at this time with you guys? This is probably the most difficult for the student athlete. It's, it's harder for them. We can still, probably all of us right now, we're evaluating even more film than we normally do because we have the time to do it. You know, the problem with that is now you kind of spread yourself a little bit more thin because you've got greater numbers on your board or that you're evaluating and you're not putting as much time into uh, maybe the, the, the top four or five that you really want on your campus. The student athlete perspective, the, the best thing they can do in the summertime, you know, in June, July, is to get on the, the campuses of those staffs that are really, really interested in them. And in some cases, you already know you like these kids and they're already offered. Um, and you, you'd like to think that every offer that's made, is, but we all know that that's not the case. And a lot of these evaluations that we're making in person in these camps uh, really make the final determination. Now, I can tell you, and this is uh, not directed at anybody in the panel, I can tell you, though, that any offer made by Mac Brown in North Carolina is committable. So we don't make a lot of offers and we want our guys to know that if they get an offer, they can commit at any time. And the only time that they can't come to North Carolina is if somebody commits ahead of them. Otherwise it forces you when you do things that way to really do your homework on guys. And part of that homework is to see them live in these camps and clinics. It's a lot easier for me to evaluate a quarterback that I might want to offer. If I can see him live, go through all the things that I'm going to coach and teach him while he's at the, the University of North Carolina. When I don't have that venue, I still have a way to evaluate them, but I'm probably not as comfortable at making some of those commitment decisions because I haven't seen somebody in live action. For them, they don't even have – they are losing the opportunity to display what they can do athletically in live action in these camps and clinics by not being able to come on campus in the fall. And I think their decision-making process is probably much more difficult right now than, than even ours. We're the pros. We evaluate talent every year and make big-time decisions every year about who we're going to grant scholarships to. This is the only time, hopefully, they're going to go through this. And now they don't even have an opportunity to display what they have on your campus. So I think it's a lot harder for parents now and for the student athletes than it is, it is for us. And, and Joe, what, what would you say is the, the, I guess the most efficient way to find you? Is it email, social media, a phone call? I mean, what, if, if I want to make the initial contact to a coach or a school that I like, what's the best way to do that? And certainly I'd say that our email is, is certainly the, probably the number one because we get that every single day and we're constantly on our phones checking our emails. I think number two would probably be social media because you can post to our walls, uh, DM us, we can follow you according to your class. Um, and then once there is a contact made or you want to reach out to your high school coach to get our information, you know, you can use that third party as well. And, and and Chris, where would you say is the best time to start? Uh, I mean, as early as possible. Um, I mean, there's no reason not to. You know, I I had a kid, a uh, quarterback, meet me at a bu at our Bucknell game. Who was, you know, I mean, he's like in seventh grade, and the dad wanted to come up and talk and you know asking advice. And I, you know, just said, hey, go to as many camps as you can, network as best as you can, you know, follow him on social media, you know, you know, post all everything you can and. You know, you're still a long ways off and don't get burned out on it. But um, you know, I think as early as possible, getting as the, the most exposure as possible. And, yeah, it stinks that the camps, you know, it stinks for us. But it, it's for these kids. I mean, you think about, 
you know, I, I'm pro- we're, we're probably different, you know, recruiting some of these kids and, uh, than you guys are. And, you know, you think about the kids that have 15 offers and it's like, ah, oh, you know, we don't have these three camps to go to. Think about the kid that's a borderline D2, you know, FCS kid where, dude, he needs to go to as many camps and get a couple schools involved in them. And those are the ones you almost really, you know, it, it's tough for. We're talking to a kid on Zoom is the same thing. You know, he was, he's like, he's freaking out. And I'm like, dude, you, you have 15 offers. I was like, you got a couple of power five offers. I don't know why you're talking to us, but you know, think about these other kids in bad situations, but um, you know, I mean, it's whatever you can, as young as you can and without getting ridiculous with it, but you know, it's, it's networking, it's exposure, it's sales. It's all it is. And nuns, how do you, uh, I guess, perform your due diligence in this environment? Honestly, anyone and everyone that we can, right? So, I mean, obviously you, you want to talk to, their head coach, uh, maybe their position coach, uh, you know, maybe it's a guidance counselor, maybe it's their trainer, Uh, you know, really, uh, you know, I I do a lot of local recruiting. So obviously the the teams they play against, you know, what do they think of them, you know, effort, character, all those things. So I I think that it's our job to use every resource that's possibly available to us to make sure that, that we can surround a prospect and really get to understand them and, you know, know, uh, especially, you know, it's come up a couple of times in this, you know, do we do all these zoom meetings? Can you really get to know someone? Well, the best way then is I guess to, to surround them the best way you can and get to know as much about them. So uh, I think it's important to use every resource you have available to you to kind of get to know them. And that is one, uh, one of the advantages, I guess, of the amount of time that we have right now to invest in this. Uh, in that same vein, Joe Daly, uh, can you talk a little bit about your recruiting process, meaning the selection process? Certainly. I can't speak for everyone. I can no. only speak to what we do here at Boston College. And Jeff Halfley has a very thorough and detailed plan when it comes to recruiting young men. And we are going to vet everyone possible in order to get all the information needed in order to make a really good decision on a young man. So obviously there's going to be the area coach who gets all the information on a young man, as many measurables as we can. And obviously anything according uh, to his academics, his tardies, um, any special needs he may have, uh, an injury or surgery uh, history, and then anything character related that anyone can speak upon the young man. And once we have all that information is presented uh, to the position coach, position coach vets that information, says yes or no. And then we get together as an offense, defense, or special team staff and we watch collectively to say yes or no. And then we get to give one last time for the head football coach to come in and watch that tape and say yes or no. So we fully examine every prospect we can in order to make the best decision that we feel uh, according to, you know, here at Boston College. So it's very thorough. There's details into that that we feel like are very, very important for our success here. Thank you. Uh, is there any difference? I mean, you guys pretty much are in the same Process? Very similar. Uh, you want to be as thorough as possible, obviously. Um, you know, I, I think that the, the main thing, too, is um, you kind of touched on it before. Like, if a kid wants to get seen by us, right, if he's reaching out and he wants to get seen, the best way to really do that is his head high school coach, right? The, the, to, to me, it's like that, you know, that is the first and foremost, like, best, quickest way to, to do that. The high school coach goes to the, his area coach, and then that's going to get that watched by his area coach immediately and then moved in that pipeline, right? Um, when a kid, you know, reaches out himself, it kind of goes in this, like Joe just talked about, this kind of bin where now we got to start finding out about him, and, you know, then we got to get to the high school coach, and then it goes through. So, you know, I, I would advise, you know, um, you know, kids, get your high school coaches to reach out, you know, to, to those area coaches or, or the, the, the coach that he knows on the staff or even if he doesn't know anyone on the staff you know reach out to a coach on the staff it it, it really it I think it speeds up the process for that kid to get evaluated All right and I would add also if, if it's not your your head coach it could be a position coach but he has to be a coach that at least is helping you because sometimes you know it's just a lot of work for the head coach to take on a right. hundred plus right. kids to try to position them but a lot uh, of high schools have recruiting coaches now recruiting coordinator type coaches or you know their trainers or whatnot you know it, right yeah. what else do you think the student athlete could do to improve his chances of getting an offer i mean one is to obviously work through his 
head coach, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask Chris Bowden. And going through the head coach is the, is the best way. Um, you know, that's, that's number one. The, the, the recruiting area coach and the position coach both, I think, is good. Um, from a, it, that's probably the best way to go about it. If you don't know, you know, who, which coach recruits your area, then, yeah, go, go through the position coach. Find a coach on staff that's going to answer you. Like, don't email the head coach. Don't email coordinators. You know, find someone that's going to watch your film. It might even be a low-level assistant on the offensive side or defensive side that, you know, is going to watch every single film that comes. Um, but that's probably, you know, you got to find a way in somehow. You got to open that door somehow uh, to get to get your film watched and to get exposure. So, um, but yeah, the 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 head coach reaching out is that's something I think every college coach is going to return that call is going to return that message. Where sometimes when you get 500 emails a day or whatever through DMs and Twitter and random kids hitting you up, you know, it's it's you you want to make sure you always get back to the coaches first and foremost. I have uh, one other question, which I don't want to miss, which which is academics, right? Every one of your schools right now, I would say in the D1 class, you guys are all high academic schools. So how important the SAT and GPA and, and to filter through some of the kids that are trying to come to your school? Well, uh, you know, I mean, obviously the, the uh, NCA academic standards are the starting point, you know, so the sliding scale with your GPA and your SAT score. So that that's the starting point. But uh, you know, at Rutgers, we're not going to recruit a class full of minimum qualifiers. And that's probably true of everybody on here. You know, I mean, that's really not uh, that's not what we're looking for. Right. We're, we're looking for well-rounded guys that care about education. Uh, you know, the average SAT score in the School of Arts and Sciences at Rutgers is like 1350. So, you know, in order to do the work, you do have to be a strong student. So, um, you know, I, I think every prospect is different, but, you know, you make yourself a strong candidate by, you know, the better your GPA is, uh, you know, as Chris mentioned, like attendance and things like that, your test scores, you know, obviously that makes life easier for everybody, you know, when you don't have to jump through all those hoops and you may be able to do that for a couple guys, you know, to kind of help them kind of get over the bar, but you can't do that for an entire class. It's just, you know, it won't really work. And, you know, that's not really what, what we're looking for. We're looking for guys that take their academics really seriously and are, you know, going to make it a priority for them. The same thing with Phil Longo. Can you, can you answer, like, what kind of academic uh, student you're looking for? In well, North I, I think uh, Nunzio touched on what I think is really the most important piece, and that is you can get in minimum qualifiers. And, and we, could, we could recruit an entire class of them if we wanted to, but – the truth is, at all of our schools, you're not really going to um, do well in school academic. Minimum qualifying student prospects don't do well in college in general. They don't do well as the better students do. And, you know, I, I, I hope that doesn't offend anybody, but that's the truth. I mean, you, if you're a great student in high school, you have a better opportunity to succeed academically in college. And it lends to their success on the field sometimes because – if you have stressors and problems and issues off the field, not, not always are you able to, to slice that down the middle and just focus on football when you're out on the field. When, when you are able to take care of your business in the classroom, when you're able to take care of your business socially, you know, and typically those are the better students, you have less baggage or, or, or fewer issues off the field. And that allows you to focus more when you're on the field. And so it's, we all have been talking about guys that are the total package and they're not easy to find it's really really easy to find a stud athlete that's a bad character guy and a bad student I can find those guys around every corner it's really easy to find a good student who's not a very good athlete those are people who aren't getting scholarships it's difficult to find a well-rounded high character good student who can also play football but the truth is, when you put guys like that in your locker room, the character level of your roster goes up, the opportunity to win more games in adverse situations against tougher opponents, your opportunity to win in those games goes up because you have guys that are depending on one another and, and are more we than they are me. So the character piece is uh, probably talked about the most, may, may get a little bit more lip service and some other things. But at the end of the day, I think most good coaches believe the character piece, both academically and athletically makes a bigger difference than maybe we give it credit for. 
Thank you, Coach. Uh, let's go around the squares, and, and if you guys can give your final comments, uh, Joe Daly first. Yeah, I'd start off with saying uh, educate yourself on, you know, what goes into getting a scholarship athletically. And then, you know, from there, you know, what, what am I talking about? Obviously the talent, the academics, and then the character piece of it. And then understand if you really want to be at that school and they say no to you in terms of an athletic scholarship, would, would they entertain you as a walk-on athlete? And if they say no there, then research the institutions that have similar demographics to what you're looking for and see if they have any interest in you and, and move forward. Uh, Division one football is not for everybody. Not everybody is genetically gifted to play at this level uh, or academically gifted to play at this level. And so with that being understand, uh, understood, you got to just be, uh, be reasonable and be honest with yourself and understand that you may not get, you know, get what you want all the time. Thank you. Nunzio? Uh, you know, I think what Joe said is really important. You know, uh, it, basically 1% of high school football players, I guess, get, you know, Division One college scholarships. So it, it is a unique thing. Uh, so, you know, one of the things I think is uh, as you do all these, you know, because I know you're going to do some of the other levels, Henry, uh, I think just having the opportunity to play college football is, uh, you know, it's an honor and it's a privilege and it's something that uh, doesn't happen easily. Uh, as a high school coach, I took a lot of pride in helping guys just create an opportunity to play college football. And I, I really think that you should play the game because you love it. And, you know, if you really do the work that it takes, uh, opportunities will present themselves depending upon your ability level, your character level, you know, uh, academics, the whole thing. Uh, but I think there's a lot of great opportunities out there for guys trying to play college football. And, you know, uh, obviously to play at the level that we're looking, we're trying to win Big Ten championships. So in order to do that, it's very selective. And, you know, so I, I do think that guys should have really high goals for themselves, but they should also recognize that playing college football is a great honor. And that, uh, you know, if you take some of the steps that you'll hear in all three of these uh you know, deals that you're putting together, I think there'll be a lot of great advice for kids to give themselves a chance to help themselves in the future. Thank you. Chris Bowden? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is don't get frustrated. I think with what we're going through right now is that we're all adjusting to it. And, you know, you need one school to like you. You need one school, to, one coach to believe in you. You don't need 15, 20 offers. And especially now without camps and, you know, doing everything through Zoom and watching film is that, you know, just not to get frustrated with the process because, you know, it's, I speak from, uh, from experience. I, I was a quarterback in California. I had no scholarships until January and then Villanova offered me a scholarship. That was it. One school, you know, I made the most op op of my opportunity and, you know, started for three years, but you know, if you're a good player, we're going to find you, you know, that's the bottom line is that, you know, have your coaches reach out. Um, but you know, it, just control what you can control. That's it. Chris Partridge. Yeah. I mean, I, first of all, I think this is, this is really, really good. Henry, man. I, I think like these coaches are saying some, some awesome stuff and really gives a good view into, into, you know, what we're looking at and stuff. So, um, but like, so, I mean, a couple things, you know, that, that kind of go along with what they're saying and, and whatnot, but you know, one thing for the student athlete to understand, like if, if you're looking at a kid that, that has a good tape and he's trying to get recruited and he has, you know, a two, three GPA, let's say he's going to raise questions, right? So, you know, that, that question then is going to be raised. So like we were talking about, like the best athlete there, don't give yourself red flags, right? So like being tardy or, or having a low GPA or, or whatever it might be, right? Or, or, you know, having a character issue on your team or something. All that is added up. Like Phil said, we're looking for the total package. So just understand, like, if my GPA is low and, and I'm trying to get frustrated and I'm getting frustrated because these offers aren't coming in, well, that might be the reason. It might not just be my football, right? You need to take care of all your business because, like Nunn said, I mean, this is, you know, getting a scholarship to a Division One program is, you know, think about all the kids in the world that would love it to be in those shoes. So it's not an easy thing to do. And, you know, if it is your dream, you got to – you need to make sure you take care of your business all throughout, right? And the other thing, the advice I would give to the guys that do have offers is recruiting is a two-way street as well, right? So, you know, 
if you do like a school, don't hesitate to call, you know, call that coach or, and, or have your parents reach out and, and, or text and, and all that, you know, you can also start recruiting the coach as well. If you are into the school, if it's in your top five or whatnot, I think kids, cause they don't know, they feel like, Hey, we just have to get recruited and accept everything that that's coming. Well, if you have a question, if something comes up that you're unsure of, pick up the phone and call that coach. Cause if he's serious about you, right. And he's offered you a scholarship, they're going to, you know, you're going to get everything you need answered. So don't be shy to, to go out and, uh, and ask and, 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 you know, and do your homework. Excellent. And, and Phil, you know, I, you, 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 you seem like the reason you're doing this, the number one reason is to try and help these prospective student athletes um, identify the things that they need to do to try to either get recruited or to make final decisions. And, and then you add in this entire spring issue that we have with the coronavirus and, and the, the lack of uh, contact that we now have, real physical contact that we now have with all these Recruit. So here, here's what I would tell a prospective student athlete now, but even during normal times, waiting until the end of the whole recruiting process and then naming your top 20, your top 80, your top 50. I mean, this whittle down who you like. Find reasons why you don't want to go somewhere and get rid of those on your list. There are plenty of reasons why you don't want to go somewhere. It's no different than recruiting. I am looking for reasons not to recruit you. And if at the end of a highlight film, which we all look good in, Eric, I've never seen an incomplete or an interception in a highlight film, right? So I'm trying to find a reason why I don't want to recruit you because it's a hard job whittling it down to the select few that you really know you're going to be interested in at the end. And that's really what recruits need to do. Instead of having a top 12, and I joke by saying top 80, but instead of having a top eight, a top 10, find three or four. You're only going to visit three or four anyway. The truth of it is. And do all of your research there. And then the other thing is make sure that they have legitimate interest in you. Having an offer from somebody doesn't mean they're going to let you commit there. So you want to have communication with the head coach, the coordinator, the position coach, the area coach. You want to make sure that if you want to go to that school, that they're really going to take your commitment. And then probably the most important thing in the fall, if you can't go to a camp or a clinic and gain exposure, is go perform. Nothing does anything more for a student athlete than the grades on the piece of paper on the transcripts at the end of the semester, because that's the proof of what they really did in the classroom. Nothing can do anything better for a recruit than producing on the field. It's just like we all tell our players, don't tell me what you're going to do, just go do it. Well, you go perform, you go produce on the field, and that's the best way uh, the video resume to get evaluated, especially now when we can't see in the summertime. And, and, and you know, like Chris said, if, if you're doing a good job socially and you have no baggage, you know what I mean? You're opening the door for females and you're not carrying guns to school and, and we're not doing drugs, that's great, okay? And then perform in the classroom and then produce on the field because – Nobody is gaining an advantage recruit-wise over anybody else right now. They're all running the same race, and we're going to have to evaluate everybody the same in the fall. So produce in the classroom, produce on the field, and whittle your choices down so we know you're serious about us, and then you're going to wind up getting recruited a little bit harder because we know we're, you know, we're, we're coming to the end of the race here because we're one of three schools that you're serious about. Gentlemen, I want to sincerely thank all of you for participating in this panel. We were very selective with the individuals we wanted on this webinar because we wanted coaches that go beyond football and truly care for the student. I know most of you personally, and needless to say, you didn't disappoint. Like Chris said, if you're a high school athlete listening to this webinar, you just received a lot of behind the scenes insight on what is truly happening today amidst these difficult times. And for you coaches, I believe you exemplify the high character that you demand from your athletes. And it's a privilege to work with you to educate athletes. Thank you for your support. Thanks, Henry. Yeah, Thank man. you, guys. Henry, have a good weekend. All right, yeah. you too. All right guys.